right, ASA has been out for almost over half a year and I decided why not in today's video to just explain my thoughts on ASA, just my general opinions and just to see maybe is it worth it over six months after its release. Let's just say ASA did not release in the best state, only really having the island map. Spartan of Time was available free at the time. Now I think you have to pay either five or ten quid for it. Can't quite remember, but that was a little bit nice that you'd have another map to play on. But most obviously did just stick to the island in myself. I did play a little bit, but I wasn't so invigorated by the map as others were. And this map really did not release in the best of states. There were glitches and bugs like 2015 are all over again, even though the devs had promised a more stable better running version of the game which just simply wasn't delivered but nowadays it is looking a little bit better although all of the floating rocks found and just generally being present ever since the game released are still here the game certainly does run a lot better and with mods like fsr 3 for all uh, cards that do support just any kind of dlss or vice versa, you could actually enable frame generation without needing a 40,000 series card and still get all of the performance benefits, which I have done on my 3090. And it's crazy the 3090 still can't run this game with 60 frames per second at like medium high settings at 1440p in like in, in ASA. Okay, the, the 3090 is a pretty high spec GPU, not to throw my trumpet here, but it is one which where he does get a lot of performance in games and in art I can max the thing out for some point and easily get 60. I need frame generation though in ASA to even touch that and sometimes I still drop a little bit below it although that is a lot less common. Still you know the game does run very nicely for me now with that frame generation actually being used with the FSR mod but otherwise I simply would not be able to get those kind of frames and before I knew about the mod I just had to deal with the somewhat subpar performance. Obviously Scorched Earth has released on ASA now too and that really has helped a lot of things out. Bob's Tall Tales has been around too, I have listed my opinions on that in another video. I've relaxed them slightly but still probably not worth it for the 25 quid asking price. Either way if you still want to get it and support the game you definitely can, I'm not going to stop you. I have so you know an example I'm showing there but as an art channel I do just tend to buy all the art content when it comes out that's sort of that's what I do the videos will pay for everything anyway but you know Scorch does released in a much better state than at the island and obviously it's a somewhat recent addition to ASA it has definitely changed it for the better there's just a lot more going on now and you know it is, it's just a nicer experience to sit through in arc it's just been a little bit worse as per se uh, when it was just the island really out and official the scorched earth map had a lot of diversity and obviously it did release for free as well not including the Bob's tall tale stuff of course but that is again besides the point the game did release this map for free apart from the price of the game of course but that could be expected with any real release these days the oasis salt was also locked behind Bob's tall tale which is a little bit of a shame and definitely was too many but still, it is quite a nice creature, and if you get it, you'll definitely enjoy it for these 24 hours that you'll have it. It's just confident it's only 24 hour creature. I don't quite see the point in that. I know it's so they're not too overpowered, but still, you know, you might as well just keep them for the whole time. Obviously, you can just enable that setting and they will actually feed, and then the hunger timer thing won't do its thing, and you can keep those things forever, but on most servers, that probably isn't the case. The Fasalsukas also came about and that is a really nice creature that was free with Scorched Earth of course. It adds a completely new dimension to that map. I love that creature. It is honestly one of the best. So is the Gigantoraptor as well. That has been a really nice addition too. And obviously the Rhino Ganetha. Although yes, not the creature releasing on ASA. It's still sort of a ASA creature if you will. I know the b rods just twitched over to Arsenal, but that was just a little bit of a point of comparison because now I want to talk about the 
graphical differences, if you couldn't tell already, Art Solo Revolt is looking a lot more kind of aged now that ASA has come out and everything's sort of been reimagined. If you take the performance though and all of that and all the bugs, then uh, maybe uh, Survivor Revolt is looking a lot better in that aspect. But in terms of looks and like all the LODs and not really the models, all the models are pretty much the same for dinos, but all the foliage and the foliage movement, it is so much nicer and cleaner than our Survivor Revolt could ever dream of guessing it. And that is the one kind of big benefit of ASA. It looks absolutely gorgeous compared to Art Survivor Revolt. I'm not saying Art Survivor Revolt looks bad though. I have heard a few people saying Art Survivor Revolt just looks really ugly. Well, they were talking about the Switch version and uh, I can't really say anything about that as that does kind of look a ugly mess. Whereas the PC version of the game still, in my opinion, looks like quite a nice game. Yes, it came out in 2015, but it's had a sort of a remastering as the game has gone on, and it's looked more impressive as things went on, and the later maps look a lot more impressive than the earlier ones, of course, as they've been built in more recent times, and that really does add the elements to the game. It still is obviously where you're going to find all of those maps. ASA has definitely got a long way to go in terms of getting all the art DLC. So if you want to actually complete all that story available at the moment, you're going to just have to play everything on Survivor Evolve or maybe the first two maps on Survivor Ascended and all the rest on Survivor Evolve. But if I did still have to choose one game, it would be Survival Evolve. Although Survival Ascended is a really nice, gorgeous looking game and it's still a work in progress, that is probably the main reason why I would choose Survival Evolved. It is like a finished game now, they've essentially stopped developing for it and that is it in its final form as a sense. Also, I find some of the mods that you can find on Survival Evolved and the integration of those mods is just a little bit nicer for PC, but for consoles, ASA is a little dream as the mods are accessible on the doorstep. I do like that the mods are also all free on Survivor Evolved. You to pay for some of them on Survivor Ascended, but I don't really have too much against that. I'm not going to argue that paid mods shouldn't be a thing as mod creators do definitely deserve a lot of respect for everything that they do and make. Come on, they do spend a lot of time in making and developing mods for this game. They do deserve all all of the respect that they can possibly get for making these mods with really high standards and us really enjoying them so it is definitely a good thing that mods are paid for now but it still is a little bit of a shame in my opinion. The thing is with ASA though the performance and just all of the lack of content means I can't quite recommend it as much as Survival Evolved although if you're looking to get into it it is in a much better state now than it obviously was months ago.